Hello everyone. This is a practice test question for Math 55 from WAMAP Unit 3. This is uh, question number 8 and we're solving for x and um, um, the coefficients of x are fractions. So that complicates things just a little bit and throws in an extra layer of rules you need to consider when you're working the problem. Uh, Problem number seven was similar, and I worked it two different ways. I'm just going to work this the same way we do when we have whole number coefficients for x, and we will do our conversion of fractions as we need to on the fly and not convert them all at first. Um, okay, so uh, negative 2 sevenths x is equal to negative 7 fourths x plus 5 twenty-eighths, all right? So we always want to combine like terms and ultimately isolate x. We want to whittle this down to where it just says x is equal to some, or some value, and that's our answer. So let's see what we can come up with. All right, so um, we got a negative number here. Actually, the coefficients of both x's are negative. So um, let's add 7 fourths x to both sides. And we'll eliminate this guy. And then we have um, negative 2 sevenths x plus 7 fourths x. And so here we would have to find a common denominator. And um, using 4 and 7. Wow. <laughs> All right. Hang on a second. I'm coming back. Okay, I'm back. Um, Oops. And I'm muted. I had to restart Zoom. Um, they shut down because um, they said I'd been idle for 40 minutes. And um, I use Zoom so that I can share this screen and catch, capture this whole thing. It's the only way I know to be able to work on my tablet here like this and talk to you, explain the problem. So I guess I have a 40 minute time limit unless there's someone in the Zoom room with me. Good to know. So we had just started this problem number eight. This is WAMAP Unit 3 for Math 55, and this is um, these are like midterm questions. You can consider those uh, midterm prep questions. And uh, originally we started negative 2 sevenths x minus is equal to negative 7, 8, 7 fourths x plus 5 twenty-eighths. And I decided to start by adding 7 fourths x to both sides. And so we got to this fraction. We need to add negative 2 sevenths x and 7 fourths x. And we were going to pick a common denominator. And 4 and 7. So one way to do that is to do a uh, prime factorization, right? Uh, the other, the easy way is to just say 4 times 7. What's that? 28. So 28 would definitely work. Um, the only disadvantage with that method is that sometimes you get a number that's twice as big or four times as big as it needs to be, which means you're doing extra math. But let's just go ahead and go with four times, uh, four times seven, which is twenty-eight. So if we multiply this fraction by seven over seven, and multiply this fraction by four over four, then here we get a negative eight twenty-eighths, and they're going to try to mess you up with the negative sign there, so don't let it happen. And then seven times seven is forty-nine, and four times seven is twenty-eight. So now we are adding. 49 twenty-eighths to negative 8 twenty-eighths, and we can also just write this as 49 twenty-eighths minus 8 twenty-eighths x. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, we can't actually subtract them because they aren't, uh, oh wait, we didn't, um, there, I left out the x. All right, never mind. 49 twenty-eighths x minus 8 twenty-eighths x, so 49 minus 8 is 41 over 28 and that amount of x and that's going to be equal to we'll bring down this 528 oops 28 having that thing shut off right in the middle of my explanation got me flustered all right so here we have uh this ends the same way as 7b the problem i just did a few minutes ago and what we have to do is um we're going to multiply both sides by the inverse of this fraction. So inverse is um, 
just turn that upside down so we have 28 over 41 times this and then this number times 28 over 41 right so these will still be equal um, so we are going to cross cancel we get 28 divided by 28 we'll get one here in the numerator and the denominator and the same with the 41 we'll get a one on top and one on the bottom so one times one over one times one is one over one which is one so um, this all boils down to x it was looking pretty elaborate there and then over on this side we have 28 in the numerator and the denominator so we can divide both of those by 28 and get one and then just multiply five times one is five and one times 41 is 41 so this is our answer if we did all our calculations correctly and we can check that by plugging this number in for this x and this x and if that initial statement is true then um, the answer is correct so you won't have time to do that when you're testing so i don't encourage it um, but sometimes you get a really strange looking fraction and you just can't believe that that's really the answer but why don't we try and see let's try it so i'm going to um, change colors again we got negative two sevenths times five over 41 and that's equal to negative one quarter times five over 41 plus and how much is that five over 28 yeah oh wait i think i miscopied something already because the numbers were squished up smushed up across the top against the top this should actually be a seven it's seven negative seven fourths okay so I'm always making transcription errors, so I have to double check. But um, let's push this up and compare. This is negative 2 sevenths x, negative 2 sevenths times 5 41sts, and then negative 7 fourths x times x, that's 5 41sts, plus 5 28ths. All right. All right. So let's calculate this out and see if we get the same number on both sides. So negative 2 sevenths times 5 41sts. We can't do any cross-canceling here. So we're going to get negative 10 over 7 times 41. Let's do it this way. 7 and 7 times 4 is 28. Wow, 287. That's a big denominator. And that's going to be equal to uh, 7 fourths, negative 7 fourths times 5 over 41. So we get negative 35 over 4 times 41, we get 4 and then 16, 164. It's not looking very promising right now, is it? All right, well, we still have to finish the problem. Plus 5 over 28. So um, this is a case where that prime factorization might be useful for finding the least common multiple of 28 and 164. Let's give it a try. I'm going to get a different color out. Maybe red will brighten my mood. So 28, prime factorization. We are dividing only using prime numbers. So uh, 2 goes into 28 14 times. 2 goes into 14 7 times. And we're done. So the prime factorization of 28 is 2 squared times 7. And then we'll do the same kind of factorization of 164. And since it's even, I like to divide by 2. So two, uh, 164 divided by 2 is 82. And that'll divide by 2 again and give us 41. And guess what? 41 itself is a prime number. It can't be divided by anything. So prime factorization of 164 is 2 squared times 41. And then what we have to do to find our common denominator, we're, um, we have 2s and 7s and 41s represented. So we have to do one of everything and um, pick one. So the factor 2, they're both 2 squared, 2 to the second power. And when you have the same, the same factor but a different power, take the highest power that there is. So we're going to multiply 2 times 2 times 7 times 41. And that's going to be our smallest number that can be the common denominator. So let's see what that is. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4 times 7 is 28. So 28 times 41 
32, 2, and 4. It's going to get big. And I'm just doing this because I'm stubborn and I'm trying to prove a point and hoping that that answer is right, of course. So 748 is our number. Um, so that would be our common denominator for both of those. And then we need to know how many times 28 goes into 748. 28 goes into 74. Well, it looks like three times. Let's try it. Three. Three times eight is 24. Carry the two. Three times two. No, it's too high. Three times two is six. So it's only going to go twice. I have to use this tablet back up. We've got to change our guess. This is why everyone hates division. So two. That's going to be 56. Borrow one from the seven. That's six. 14 minus 6 is 8, and 6 minus 5 is 1. hope I can read that later. And then bring down the 8. 28 goes into 188. How many times? Well, how many times does 3 go into 19? Like 6 times, right? Let's try 6. 6 times 8 is 48. Carry the 4. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. 8 minus 8. 0, 8 minus 6 is 2. There's 20. It's not going evenly. Let's see what I do wrong. 4 times 7 times 41. 28 times 41, right? Oh my goodness. Okay. I got the wrong number. 2 times 4 here should be 8. That should be 820. Now we've got to do some serious erasing. Let's try adding these together again. All right. Um, 8 and 0 is 8. 2 and 2 is 4. 3 and 8 is 11. So we have a new denominator. Right? 1148. Okay, so when we do our least common multiple calculation, it's a number that they all have to go into evenly. So that's how I knew. That's what first keyed me in. There was a mistake. So let's try this again. We got 1148. How many times does 28 go into that? Okay, 114. What is that going to be like five to six times? It's like 30 going into 112, 120, not quite. 30 going in there. Let's say three times. Three times eight is 24. Carry the two. Three times six, two is six, plus two is eight. Did we go high enough? Four minus four is zero. Um, and 11 minus eight is three. We didn't go high enough. All right. Calculators do make life easier. We gotta go one. We've got to try four. Four times eight is thirty-two. Carry the three. Four times two is eight plus three more is eleven. That's a lot closer. And then uh four minus two is two, and then we have zeros here. Bring down the two, it's eight, twenty-eight. So twenty-eight, this goes in forty-one times. All right, so we have to multiply this side by forty-one over forty-one. And then we have to multiply um, this side. Let's see how many times 164 goes into 1148. 164, it's like 16 going into 100. And we'll just have to guess. Let's say eight times. Nine times? Let's try nine. Nine times eight. Nine times four is 36. Carry the three. Nine times six, 54. Seven, carry the five. Mm, that's going to be way too big. Let's try seven. I'm going to go with seven. Oops, one, one, four, eight. 7. 7 times 4 is 28. Carry the 2. 7 times 6 is 42. Plus 2 more is 4. Carry the 4. 7 times 1 is 7. Plus 4 more is 11. Okay. 
there we have a winner. We multiply this by 7 over 7. Then we'll be able to do the math for these two. So 7 times 35, we're running out of room. 7 times, and that's a negative, so 7 times 35, just remember it's negative. 7 times 5 is 5, carry the 3, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 3 is 24, so 245. We got negative 245 over 7 times 164. 7 times 4 is 8, carry the 2, 4, 1148. Should have known that, right? That's our common denominator. So negative 245, 1148 plus. So I'm just going to uh, rearrange these because we're combining these two. I'm going to put that over here. So 5 times 41. I guess we haven't multiplied that yet. That's 205. 205 over 1148. All right, so um, we've got a positive 205 and a negative 245. And the um, we need to take the difference between those two and then the sign from the number that's bigger. So uh, negative 245 has a larger absolute value, so that's going to be the winning sign. And uh, 245 minus 205 is 40. That's going to be negative. So negative 1148. And this is supposed to be equal to this number. Let's try green. I haven't used that. This number is supposedly equal to this. So let's see if it is. Is negative 10 over 287 equal to negative 40 over 1148. So we need to um, multiply the top and the bottom here by uh, numbers that will give us the same numerator and denominator, and I think that's going to be 4. So 4 times negative 10 is negative 40, and how much is 4 times 287? 4 times 7 is 8, carry the 2. 4 times 8 is 32, plus 2 is 4, carry the 3. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 more is 11. So there's our lucky number, 1148. And that's equal to negative 40 over 1148. So this is correct. The answer we got up here, x is equal to 5 over 41. That is the correct answer. So it's kind of remarkable. Um, this whole mess has a, a real solution, a real number solution. And we can prove that it works because we plug that value in to our equation right here. And then it took a lot of calculating to do, but that's kind of why we're here, right? So we're practicing those calculating skills. Um, Math 55, you guys get to use calculators more often than the others, but I just want to show you that you really can do the answer. And that's a 20-minute video. <laughs> anyway, if you watched this long, thanks. I hope it made sense. And if you have questions over any of this, uh, let's meet and do a Zoom session. All right. Hang in there.